Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start out by saying, you are amazing. I love you. You are fantastic. I'm proud of you. Okay, and then let me secondary off by saying, I'm sorry. Apparently, I mistimed the storm that hit Texas by about 12 hours. So I told everybody, all right, when the worst of this rain hits, don't be out driving in it. And guess what I was doing? That night, I went out. Because what I did was like, all right, I lay down to edit my videos. I know it's not the best posture ever, but it's what I've been doing for six years. And so technically, because all I've been doing is working or fighting hackers over the last two months, I've been like bedridden almost for two months. So then I went out, I had a couple beers and a shot of whiskey, and then felt like I had superpowers. So I ran around town in the pouring rain, taking pictures, driving around. I had a blast. But then the next day, my body was like, what have you done? You can't just lay there for two months and then go run around. So my body was broken. So I had to lay here and sleep a lot to let it heal. Yeah, I was out in the pouring rain. It was a lot. I had a blast. So thank y'all. And thank y'all. And I needed it. And once my body repaired, which is now, I feel much better. Oh, my God, though. So when I last was here. I put up a, or the time before, I put a, a quadruple warning for the weather, which actually was calmer than I expected, although I predicted we would see higher totals than the three inches in Texas, and we did. We saw 10 inches, um, and some places did flood pretty bad. I actually thought it would be worse. And so, but the one thing that I did get decent, or right, was since then, we've had the Popocatépetl volcano in Mexico explode pretty nastily multiple times so that is something to keep an eye on and then you had the mount etna volcano explode on the 7th here we have tim kelly telling us that we have a shot at a giant christmas storm we are in christmas storm but then look at all the rain and water there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere and then it turns out dying in an explosion of volcanic ash probably isn't the worst way to go Unfortunately, I read a lot of history when I was a kid, and the Nazis, who were total dicks, by the way, they did this thing where they would, they would take a, a glass shaft, they would put it in a man's penis hole, and then they would shatter it, and then he would bleed out to death. So yeah, I guess dying in an ash explosion is better than that, I agree, Science History Institute. And then... We got this comet, which is now six days away. And with so many people mad at me and hacking me and just being like, I don't like you. I hate you. It's probably not a good time for me to date anybody because I get in trouble for, you know, talking the truth. And then I get in trouble when beautiful women get a big old crush on me. Like that night I went out. I saw this band. It was amazing. The lead singer was amazing. She was cute. She had this great hair. And then I went outside to have a cigarette. And all of a sudden, the bar employee was standing on the stage from like 25 feet away, threw a broom at me, and it landed right at my feet. So I turned to the two people next to me, and I said, is the singer his girlfriend? And they both nodded. It's like, okay, and then I left. And I went on my walk. So I'm just saying, you know, I, I don't know if all you other dudes out there could be super cool too that way. I wasn't such a flame for the moths. That'd be great. You know? I love you guys. And ma'ams. Ma'am. <sighs> Dang, though, I sure would like a good hug. Okay, yeah, so this comment is going to be a crazy deal. Hopefully, we'll get to see it with the naked eye. Hopefully, it won't bring any flame and doom and death to us through, you know, debris and meteorites and shit. But I don't think it will. Or the black plague through the cinnogen dust. But I don't think it will. Or else I'd be making a hundred... Video's like, oh my God, we're going to die from Cinegen dust. Nah, I'm kidding. All right. And Sarah reminds us to stay hopeful, stay excited, and know that you are not alone. Much love, family. And that's everybody on earth. We are all family. I don't know if you knew that. It's true. We're all humans, man. The more you know. Thank you, Sarah. You're always a blessing of joy. So yeah, like I'm talking about this volcano eruption in Mexico... Click, click, boom. So, 
yeah, I think the volcanic activity is increasing. And remember, due to my orbital planetary angular momentum theory, we're going to see increasing volcano activity, increasing earthquake activity, and increasing crazy weather over the next six years as we seek balance. I think it won't get better until Jupiter comes back around, which is like six years from now. I think when Jupiter gets inside here, it's going to get real dicey in about two or three years. You know, and it will be interesting. This is new to me, so we're watching it. But I know that we had that 7.2 earthquake in Alaska on the 30th, and then we had the 7.5 earthquake in I forget the name of the, the Loyalty Islands by Australia. And so if it is going on like a five-day window, five, six-day window of when the hits are hit coming, the next big earthquake would come in the next 24 to 36 hours, I would guess. But like I'm just watching patterns. I'm, it's not a prediction. And remember, have a great week. I always believe something wonderful is about to happen. And I know after 2018, that may be a lot to ask for. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's been a rough year. Technically, it's been the worst year of my life. And by trying to bring everybody together, I somehow got a bunch of people that hate my guts. That's crazy. I'm like, I don't know why. I just try to be cool and nice. And I've even stopped insulting people. I, you know, when people insult me, I'm good with words and I used to like to insult them back, but I don't do that anymore. Well, it takes strength sometimes. Oi, do you know Langini volcano showing signs it may erupt? Tanzania. It's like I said that, you know, I, I know I showed you guys a memo back a week or two ago. They basically said it was from 2010 and it said volcanic activity is totally normal and average. And please apply this article to anything that happens over the next 50 years. I, I thought that was kind of funny, but in a non funny way, you know, that's kind of science's attitude. Like, no, no matter what is erupting, it's all normal. So, yeah, and I got to try to figure out how to get in less in trouble, you know? Yeah, that's the whole thing. Is, man, I'm so busy worrying about volcanoes and comets and beautiful women and uniting people and building Stanley City, the city of the future, that I don't have time to hate people. I don't hate anybody, man. You know? I mean, granted, I dream, they dream about Selena Gomez or not, but I'm single, you know? How can a single man not be in love with her? So I'd like to know. Anyway, and if I'm a little off my game, I'm a little rusty. I'll get back on target, and I will be working nonstop all day today and all through the week. Because I love you guys, and you guys are amazing. Although the weather's calmed down, we got another big storm coming this weekend, and it's already Monday, so that's only three and a half, four days away. All right, magnetic mismatch in the solar wind. Huh? For the third day in a row, Earth is inside a stream of fast-moving solar wind. Inside the stream, wind speeds are topping 600 kilometers a second. Yet there have been no geomagnetic storms. Why not? Hermione, come to me. Unless you have a boyfriend, then stay there. Plus, I think I might have made Selena my wife of the heart the other day. I don't know. I have to go check my notes. There's a mismatch. Magnetic fields inside. But that would have to be, you know, sealed with a kiss, I guess. Magnetic fields inside the solar wind stream are pointing north, the same direction as Earth's magnetic field. North versus north prevents the type of magnetic link-up that leads to storming. Well, that's good. Even without a storm, however, our sky watchers have seen a few very beautiful auroras. Yeah, the auroras haven't really stopped all year. Even when there's no solar storm, which is really weird. Asterisk. Unless our magnetic field is getting... Graded like Swiss cheese. Observers around the world are reporting that Comet 46P Wurtanen is now visible to the naked eye. Ooh. We got six days for this thing to brighten, bro. I saw it, just barely, from the countryside near Yastipdikater in the Czech Republic, says Petr Horolek. It was rather dim and diffuse, kind of like me. But I'm sure it was there, kind of like me. He set up his Canon 6D digital camera. 
for a Wharton selfie, and the 30 second exposure easily captured the comet's green cutout. There you go. There's him, and then there's the comet. So, I will do a video later today telling you guys exactly where to find it. The comet is now shining like a big fuzzy star of fifth magnitude in the constellation Eridanus. What? Oh, yeah. Eridanus. You know, it's that popular comet. It's that popular constellation. Everybody's favorite. Eridanus. Arid, I looked it up the other day, it means having a oatmeal-like texture. So, you know, who doesn't love an anus with an oatmeal-like texture? Gross! Its faint glow is easily overwhelmed by city lights, but under the dark skies of a rural landscape, the comet may be seen without any optics. And if I was going to somehow magically get a date four or six days from now, we should probably go to Fort Davis, because it's the darkest place in the United States to watch for comets and such astrological, nominal phenomena. My brain broken. All right. But, like I said, we got, it's one of the 10 closest encounters of the space age. It'd be closest to us in the 16th, and though comets are like magical dirty cat space dragon angels or whatever. We never know what's going to happen, so I will keep you guys updated. Oh, man. Yeah, dude, this, I mean, it's impressive. It's way more impressive than ice never was. I'll tell you that for dang sure, ma'am. So, yeah, I'll be on the lookout, and I think you guys should be on the lookout, too. This is almost like a fun Asteroid Fight Club extracurricular activity. All right, now let's look at the models, shall we? Everybody loves the models. So, yeah, we still have giant freaking rain bands. Um, speaking of that, you know, it's weird is look at this band here coming into look at that thing. Whoops. So, it doesn't have. Like when you check the charts, I hear the storms that are going on right now. It's not as bad, but here they got a lot of snow up here. And but if this is the next seven days, and if that secondary, the trailing secondary low I've been talking about extends back farther, you guys could be getting a whole lot of rain. But right now it doesn't look that bad, although some areas in the coast are going to be getting it. But it looks like the Pacific Northwest. It's going to get the biggest brunt, and then, of course, that moisture will move down. Kind of do the same thing that the last storm did. So, yeah, let's, do, let's run the GFS. We are running the GFS. Remember, this is a model, and the models have been real sketchy, dude. So, they're changing one minute to the next. Then there's some weird, strange storm. And it looks like the East Coast could be getting some nasty rain. If you'll notice, the West Coast is getting hit again. And at one point, there's this weird storm that kind of hangs along the coast keep my eye on that it's still like 10 days 12 days away definitely can't trust the models that far out and there it shows a possibility of some type of a Christmassy storm developing and these storms are moving so fast back and forth we won't be able to tell until about a week away and so and then yeah UK Europe you guys are still going to be getting the brunt of all this Now's the time to smoke if you got them. Man, what a crazy year, huh? Oh, that's another thing. One thing I'm going to be working on is I'm going to be going back and doing a breakdown of the year and all the videos I made. And it's, there was a time where I quit doing edited weather. Holy crap, look at the size of that candy cane. Rain band. Holy smokes, that's big. Okay. Well, I stopped doing it because the footage was so, like, horrible. It put me in a horrible mood every time I'd edit all that footage together. And then, any I gotta tell you this, it's true. Anytime I finish a really good edited video, I get hacked to pieces. Like, they get real mad. Anyway, so I, you know, I tap the brakes when I get too much shit I gotta deal with. 
And hopefully you understand. But yeah, look at that. You guys are going to be getting hit with some nasty shit, Europe. So just stay on top of it as much as you can. Everybody's distracted by the Brexit thing. You know, I, I think I kind of understand Brexit, although I kind of don't. Because I went the other night. I spent like, I don't know, an hour, half hour trying to find good articles, good videos explaining Brexit to me. And man, the whole thing is just a cluster funk. It's really complicated, but not, I don't know, it's really, everything's so weird. But I'm remaining Sagittariously optimistic about the future. As civilization is in retrograde, hopefully we'll start going forward again. But I want you guys to know that I'm back, and hopefully better than ever. And I slept a lot. Honestly, the first week I've slept more than I have almost all year. But it's good. I need it. I've worked hard this year. Really hard. I would put my body of work over the last thousand days up against almost any man or woman on the planet. I'm not saying that better. Just saying, yeah, I've given it my all. I'm glad to have such great people along with me for the ride. So I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. You are like a blessing from God. And I wouldn't be doing this without you. So everybody stay cool. And I will put my ducks in a row. And then be like, oh my God, ducks in a row are so cute. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, peace out. God bless everyone. Stay cool.